Tales from the bungalow, the fair of room 1313. The unknown holds many strange, very secret, but none stranger than the weird tale of room 313. A full courtesy insurance company. Here comes John Artiba, a new resident representative. That's a Timoney him. He's sending him to the McLeish Construction Company. That'd be a good case. Old man McLeish is a hard nut to crack. You can sell him as it should sure be the fair haired boy around here. Pay for this, will be back with signature or dotted line. He'll be back sooner than he thinks. Wait till he finds out McLeish has been out of business for 25 years. Ha ha ha! Bill Mason Merchants, but no McLeish. I know this is the right place. I also have an elevator operator. Blazes, this crowd is worse than the army mess. Oh, hey, that last elevator is empty. Just waiting for me. What luck? But it's occurred to John Abbott to question. No question occurs to John Abbott to question. Is that that, that an empty elevator? Right this way, sir, going up. Looking for the McLeish Construction Company. McLeish Construction Company? No, no, you can't go there. Why do you mean you can't I go there? And you're taking me right now. Here you are, sir. Room 313. Room 313. Okay, wait a minute. There's no such room. Here, there's just a blank wall between 3112 and 314. Doesn't seem to hear. Me looks strange. So strange, I said. There is no room three one three one three. Well, I'll be a would have sworn. There's nothing but a blank wall. But it is but it is room three one three. One three one three. Wait just for me. What a musky place it feels hot and cold at the same time. There's something about this office. An old man, but that girl, she's beautiful. I'm Casper McLeish, she was wished to see me. My secretary, Ellen Rogers. I'm John Abbott, Mr. McLeish. I'd like to talk to you about insurance, accident insurance. Insurance insurance? Yes, of course. I've only wished I'd gotten some earlier. You see, I learned my lesson. Thank you, McLeish. McLeish. You're doing a wise thing, so I'm right there. The girl, she is such a nice smile. I must talk to her. Thank you too, Miss Rogers. It isn't at every sale that I, that is as pleasant as this one. You're a good salesman, Mr. Abbott. Up here, we never see people like you. Look, Ellen, Miss Rogers, forgive me. I don't usually act this way, but never met a girl like you before. No, I don't think you have. Couldn't I meet you some time after work? I'll wait for you tonight. No, not tonight or any night. That's impossible, I'm afraid. We'll find you here. We'll, he'll find you here, Mr. Gregory. Who's who? He's what's the matter with him? He's jealous. No, John, believe me, he's not jealous. What are you doing here? You're rash fool you for coming here and for letting me find you for your folly. You must pay. Look. That look in his eyes, he's mad at what the truth you must die. You could have killed me, that made me good stiff poke of the jaw. No, no, you must not try to fight him. Not with, not try to fight, not with him. John, listen to me, I've got to save you. Let me go, he's a drawing a sword. I missed once, but I will not miss the second time. Please let him go this time. Let him live. He's innocent. Came here by mistake. Please let him come. I'm not afraid of him. A man's a dangerous man. I won't leave you with him. I'll get the police. No, forget the police. For me sake, forget all this. Don't come back. We have threatened you twice. Nothing can save you the third time. Go now. Go. So hard to tip. Great by strange and he John Abbott returns. I got your order, boys. Thanks for the tip. Huh? You found out. And now he's got, trying to turn the joke on us. Let's see. Let's see that order. Aha, uh-huh, quite a boy, that's Abbott. 
come back with Felice's signature. He says, what are you reading? Tell us Abbott, what did you learn from Felice? Fred learned been out of business for 25 years. What? A blood pouring in my bits of temples. What well, greasy jest was this? I've been here 25 years. Can't be. I was there myself. I saw it with my own eyes. I must have been losing my mind. Headless of the girl's strange warning. Floating floor, please. Room 1313. Yes, sir. What did the mistake say, mister? There is no floating floor in this building. No, no. We must be a move come around here, or a real old timer. We used to have a first heat floor, but it's 12 a.m. For, for luck. But then a very boy, short red haired fellow, with fretful freckles, buys you way off. Never saw anyone around here and looked like that. Here's 12 a.m. That's the floor you want. Yes, maybe this is the floor I want. But there is no room for a free or free. A wall would blank again. Boy, you meet all kinds around here. Wait, don't go. Come back, I'm afraid. What a weird mystery was this. Why was Abbott's heart pounding so furiously? Looming shadows of tucking the cane. Please, no, I didn't, couldn't, can't be. It is he. I am Mr. Gregory. You again. That evil face has eyes, a look of death, death, no, no. I would know you met him by the morning of Elian Rogers, Elian Rogers. The awful fear that had welled up in John Abbott, burst forth in the surge of blood, madly broke into flood long, but terror stricken flight. Twice I'm missed, but this is the third time, but you never escape me, never. I can't fight him, I can't withstand the strange power. It's the only chance I've got to run for it, run. Going down, going, sir, down again. Going down, you again. You're just in time, just heaven. Thank heavens. Aha, uh-huh, that envelope belongs to me, Gregory. And you're writing it to your finish. Help me. Help. You know, just before that fellow died, you kept mumbling about that beautiful girl. An old man named McLeish, another man, yeah, Nate. What was that name here, Gregory? Well, I'll be darned. The police company used to be in the building room. One free, one free. Twenty five years ago. And just and just twenty five years old, old man. Easy secretary. And a young freckle faced elevator operator all killed in an elevator crash. But that that grumpy fellow I never heard of him. And so ends the strange story of room three one three. Was it real? Who is Mr Gregory? Does he affect Abbott's tormented information? Or was he death himself?